What's up internet, it's your soul, and I don't normally talk too much about politics in a serious way because I understand that politics is uh, basically puppetry and never really solves problems, it's just there to divide and conquer and make it appear as if problems are being solved when they never really are and I often say that if politics was really meant to solve problems then most of the problems would already be solved. Uh, they've had a long time and generally speaking haven't really solved any problems uh, added a few problems but not really solved a whole lot but today Boris Johnson ex-mayor of London has now been announced to be the new leader of the Conservative Party in Britain and uh, therefore the Prime Minister and replacing Theresa May so for those who don't know Boris Johnson is a controversial figure like a lot of these people are and yeah, you know, just another um, person educated at Eton, elitist type school, um, you know, obviously surrounded by money and wealth the whole time. Uh, you know, like a lot of these people, some people might meet them and think they're, they're good and, uh, you know, so on. I think there's enough evidence to show uh, Boris Johnson's background involves the same kind of elitist groups as David Cameron. And, uh, yeah, we can get into that in another time, another video perhaps, but um, just wanted to go through a few interesting points here related to uh, a picture, basically an intuition that I got from my spirit uh, in 19, oh, sorry, 2014. We'll get into that in a moment, but I'm just going to give you a bit of back, amusing introduction, first of all, from Jonathan Pye regarding Boris Johnson. This was filmed before this announcement that he'd won this alleged competition. So before tonight's crucial debate, let's take a look at the week's ups and downs as the race for number 10 continues. Do you remember a few months ago, Tim, when the EU gave us that extension and said, in all sincerity, please do not waste this time? Yeah, well, I'm pleased to say we've spent most of it choosing which incompetent, privately educated, self-serving right-wing piece of shit will run our country this time. Yeah, I'm already used to the fact that Boris Johnson is our new Prime Minister, because even if he isn't, the only alternative is Jeremy Hunt, so, who, who I think would make an excellent Tory Prime Minister. I mean, think about it. He was, he was head boy at Charterhouse, for fuck's sake. So he was a smug little wanker from an early age. He's perfect, all right? He's the richest person in the Cabinet, by far. He's almost overqualified, right? It's on public record that Jeremy Hunt has breached anti-money laundering legislation, breached parliamentary spending rules and dodged tax. He was found to have misled the public and broken his pledges on NHS funding. And as a result of the backdoor privatisation of the NHS, Professor Stephen Hawking won the right to take Hunt to court. And then Jeremy Hunt had Stephen Hawking killed. That one's just a theory, all right? He wants to bring back fox hunting, restrict women's reproductive rights. I mean, honest to God, how do these arseholes end up deciding the fate of a nation's future? Oh, yeah, head boy at a very expensive school. Gotcha. It's good to have a choice, though, isn't it? His rival, total opposite. Man of the people. Eaten, trained, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson, whose first election victory was as Oxford Union president. I think, I think it's de Feffel. De Fleffel? De Feffel? It's a royal name. I'm not making it up. De Feffel. De Feffel. Maybe that's why he speaks the way he does. He's just constantly trying to pronounce his own name. Oh, De oh, oh, Feffel. Oh, oh. Can we seriously trust either of these careerist shits to run the country? To trust a politician, you need to know what they stand for. They don't stand for anything. They stand for whatever will get them elected prime minister. And in this case, the people getting them elected, they aren't the electorate, but the Conservative Party. Fuck me. Not Tory voters, Tory members. I mean, imagine what it takes to get their vote. You don't even have to pretend to want to help the working classes with their bloody food banks and their nits. Forget them. Just chuck a tax cut here, fling an uncosted spending spree over there, dangle the occasional maimed fox in their eye line. Vote for me. You can kill a fox. A backroom deal here and a backstreet abortion there, but mostly just spout a load of shit about looking the EU square in the eye and promise to swing your balls around Brussels and wipe 
appoint them on Donald Tusk's face. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to negotiate this. And we're going to do that. And we're going to take back control. And then the UK economy will collapse. And the mass exodus of industry will continue. And after a decade of austerity, we will walk ourselves into another recession. But no matter who's in charge, there'll be a millionaire in number 10 who doesn't give a fuck. And he'll be fine no matter what. Thank you. Well, compared to many leadership races in recent years, this one is plodding along at a snail's pace. Tonight's leadership debate is the first... <laughs> OK, so obviously a bit of comedy there, but, you know, fairly accurate at the same time. So that's just to give people a bit of background on Boris Johnson, who he is, what people think of him commonly. Uh, you know, I like I say, I do know people who have even met him who have a very different view of him. But, uh, you know, there's no accounting for taste. I've never met him. I can't really say much about him personally. But what I can say is that, in, as you can see here, in 2014, I actually, um, I would say, received intuitional guidance for internally via spirit to look into certain synchronicities that I noticed and one of them related to Boris Johnson and you know this was at a time when I wasn't really again paying much attention to politics uh, but now looking back I can understand why it was worth me looking into this so um, basically I noticed that there seemed to be quite a similarity between Boris Johnson and Emperor Nero from uh, times gone by so I looked at his face and um, looked at photos, well, not photos, but well, photos of busts of, of Emperor Nero. And as you can see here in these images, very clearly, uh, they are very, very similar in appearance. I mean, both have got this kind of eccentric, you could say, hairstyle, um, very similar nose, quite uncannily similar lips. They're not very common sort of shaped lips, I would say. I mean, if you look at the picture on the left, if you were to switch the hair around, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that you could say that people might think that the bust on the left was a younger Boris Johnson. So, yeah, um, I found that quite interesting. And at the time, I remember talking to uh, intuitive uh, people, spiritual type people. And uh, one guy basically said, yeah, yeah, I know um, Boris Johnson is the reincarnation of uh, Emperor Nero. I already knew that. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, I didn't have any definite proof of that. I just found it interesting considering that the stories of, of Nero are that basically he... Um, the famous story is that he played the fiddle while Rome burned. I just read a piece saying that that's impossible because fiddles weren't didn't exist at the time. But, you know, you can just switch the fiddle with a different instrument, a lyre or something else. A lyre would be appropriate, I guess, but... Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, I'm definitely not an expert in the life of Emperor Nero. I've not put a lot of time in studying, but one thing I do remember reading was that apparently he uh, was put in the position of being emperor deliberately by a family member because they knew he was so incompetent and they wanted the fallout from his nightmarish um, activities as emperor to uh, happen to benefit them. So that brings me on to what I then found when I searched Emperor Nero Boris Johnson, which I found particularly interesting. Uh, as it turns out, there's quite a lot of people who had already written um, articles comparing Boris Johnson to Emperor Nero without actually noticing that they looked almost identical, uh, which I find very telling. And um, this particular one, uh, I think, is yeah, it's from the Evening Standard. The mayor's thirst for spectacle is just like Emperor Nero's. Um, Boris Johnson wants Formula One on our streets, but such events merely make the capital even more chaotic. Uh, and if we just search for the word Nero, uh, it doesn't mention anywhere else on there. But basically the idea is here that we're talking about distraction and spectacle, you know, which is a classic technique within politics to distract everyone as much as possible in, in order to uh, make sure that they don't really check into what you're doing. You know, if you're committing crimes and doing things that most people wouldn't like as an alleged leader, then, you know, it's much easier to distract everyone than it is to defend yourself against prying eyes. Um, so here's another piece. Uh, there we go. The New Europeans, not, uh, you know, a site or newspaper, if that is what it is, or magazine that I've heard of before, but um, this is from 2018. Boris Johnson is the master of cowardice. And then for the, for the biographer of Churchill to be the master of cowardice is a feat of hypocrisy unparalleled since the Emperor Nero refused the poison and lamented what an artist is now about to perish. 
So he's been pretty much compared to Emperor Nero again here. The problem for Johnson is that his ministerial career is built on an original act of cowardice from which he will never recover. The desertion of David Cameron over Europe in the 2016 referendum campaign. Bear in mind that David Cameron and um, Boris Johnson were both members of the Bullingdon Club, uh, which was a, or probably still is, a kind of elitist private group. But I suppose a little bit like Skull and Bones in America for Yale. Um, the, you know, the stories of, of David Cameron having... Uh, put his penis inside a pig's head and things like that, you know, that kind of secret society type stuff. Um, he models himself on the Roman emperors, who he studied with adoration in Latin, for who everything revolved around prestige and personal power. Now, I, I didn't know that until I read this. I've never heard that before. But I find that very telling. You know, I don't... Th I, this just really does add significant weight to the idea that he actually is a reincarnation of, of Emperor Nero. For those who don't really think reincarnation is real, I would just add that I didn't really think it was real either until I really started focusing into it and studying and meditating, do yoga and detoxing and clearing out myself so that I could, um, let's say, access my own unconscious and subconscious, at which point I did start to access memories of past lives and I know for certain that they're real. So... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons why I was looking into this subject. Policy is bread and circuses. Anything goes, provided it is big, bright and self-glorifying to the leader of his people. Um, exactly. Distraction and self-aggrandizement. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't even know about this until recently, but yeah, apparently he built a, a, a cable car in London um, that's like nicknamed after him. And pretty much no one's used it because it has no real practical use. <laughs> so the idea of this, I mean, it reminds me of, you know, like a North Korean dictator or something like that. I'm not saying that we're going to have these massive posters of Boris Johnson everywhere and it will be a crime to laugh at them or anything like that. But, you know, definitely this is the opposite of what we really need in terms of somebody guiding policy in a country if we're intending to have some form of balance, peace and prosperity. Here's another piece. Uh, Irish Times, yeah, 2018. So Brexit parallels with the fall of Rome are all too obvious. So they're basically comparing the whole situation with uh, Europe with the fall of Rome, which Nero presided over. The Emperor Nero, with the probably apocryphal story about the fiddling while Rome burned, comes most obviously to mind. He may or may not have provided musical accompaniment, but he also cer almost certainly started the fire. Nero's violin playing amidst the chaos and destruction that he caused has contemporary resonance in Boris Johnson's newspaper columns. So that's and yet another story for, you know, unrelated, well, similar but not quite the same reasons, connecting him to Emperor Nero. Hmm, funny that. Uh, okay, so could it be that Johnson's been put in, yet again, is history repeating, he's been put in at this position to preside over a collapse? Well, he presided over the collapse of uh, Rome, apparently, possibly, and now the collapse of what? Is it going to be the collapse of Britain, the collapse of EU, or both? And here's another one. Uh, Evening Standard, 2016. Simon Jenkins, Boris Johnson's first for spectacle is just like Emperor Nero's. Something to keep your eyes on, I think, what happens here. And if people really pay attention to what Emperor Nero did, you might start to detect more and more and more patterns that are reflected in Boris Johnson's life and thinking as well, and in his heart. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be very interested to hear if anybody is an expert in Emperor Nero's life. I certainly haven't studied that in great detail. And, I, you know, very short of time, I'm very busy, so... It's unlikely, to be honest, that I'm going to be doing that anytime soon. But if anybody does have insights into Nero and Johnson together, then I'd definitely like to hear it. I also have similar characters from the modern world who, uh, who in a similar way, I've identified as likely having been specifically reincarnated as a specific people. Uh, so we can get into that, if you like, as well. So just let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, until next time, wishing you well and much love to all. Peace.